Good. I'd like to take it one step before that, our Father. Uh, because I think of when our children come to us and they want to ask us something and uh, they don't know the right words and they don't know the way to ask, but the fact is that they've come. And uh, many times I've been studying, my daughter's come in and she'll sit there maybe and want to talk and she sees I'm busy and maybe a tear will be in her eye. You know, that's not uh, something I could tell her how to approach me, but when I see that, I drop everything. I have great comfort in this, that uh, the Bible says none of us know how to pray as we ought. And uh, the point is that God looks on the heart. I think of the Apostle Paul, who probably thought his, his praying was right before he met the Lord Jesus, but um, his prayer was so dynamically changed after he met, after the Lord knocked him off his high horse and placed him in the dirt at his feet, and he saw the risen, glorious, radiant Christ. The first thing God ever says about Paul after his conversion, it's a term of astonishment. It's, behold, he prayeth. And he'd been saying canned routine Pharisee prayers all his life, but now suddenly he's coming to a person he's related to. So I just take great comfort in the fact that God sees our heart. It also makes me tremble as well, that he cares as much about our neology as our theology. It's good to pray scripture back to God. You can, first of all, plead the promises of God. That's powerful. What God has promised, you can plead with him to do. I plead Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. He says that God is committed um, to make us complete, and fully developed, and every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Well, I, I claim that. I repeatedly claim that. Um, you can take the instructions that he gives, and you can pray that instruction back to God. He tells us to walk in the Spirit, and you can turn that around into a prayer, Lord, this day I'm committed to walking in the Spirit, and I claim the presence and power of the Spirit to enable me to do it. Um, you can pray scripture prayers back to God. All these prayers of Paul in the epistles plus the prayers of Christ they're intended to show us how to pray. And then there are many prayers in the Old Testament and the Psalms and elsewhere. Herbert Lockyer has a book, All the Prayers of the Bible. And uh, praying Bible prayers back to God is a very powerful way of uh, really getting your prayers in focus and in line with what the Spirit wants to do. How can we be certain that we are theologically and biblically sound in the content and manner of our prayers? In terms of a prayer focus, how can we be certain that we are the theologically and biblically sound in the content and manner of our prayers? I would like for you to um, at least consider uh, the doctrinal prayers and the little prayer patterns for revival. I believe that prayer, it ought to be focused upon who the Lord Jesus Christ is what it means to be united inseparably with him eternally, and uh, what that means, what authority position that gives us, and to begin to regularly take the great verities of our Christian faith and to pray them back to our Heavenly Father and uh, look to God to effect the revival and just keep going. I have been um, um, pastor for 41 years. I've been 10 years serving as president and now president emeritus of the International Center for Biblical Counseling. I do not know of a time in my life when God has not burdened me for revival. And. Uh, People will say to me, well, we don't have it. And I say, well, we're 51 years nearer than when I started. <laughs> and I really believe that. The kind of revival that I've been asking God to do is the kind that, that uh, Brother Richard has been talking about. A move of God that so 
all of him and all of grace, that it just breaks and humbles his people in the way that he knows we need. And we ask him for it and, and wait on him for it. 